Hello good people and welcome to Finder Skills Hub. Here yeah, we learn, we connect and we grow. When it comes to summarizing data in Excel, there are several options now. Good old pivot tables has been with us for years now. But in recent weeks, Microsoft Excel has two new functions to make this experience of summarizing data more exciting. So we have pivot by and group by. These two functions would summarize data with just a simple formula and it's dynamic. So if there are changes in your data source, it just pops up in your summary as well. So in this short video, I'm going to walk you through the journey of using pivot by and group by, but I'm not going to leave you with just those two functions because even though they are huge improvements, there's still a gap that hopefully will get a new function very soon. That is when you are analyzing two different data sets. Okay, so you have an actual and budget table Put it together using dynamic arrays and slices and all that so after we've covered pivot by and group by i'll take you on a journey using dynamic arrays and cube functions to be able to analyze data sets that sits in two different tables so it's pretty an exciting journey if you are game fire up your excel and let's go through this step by step Okay, so we are going to begin with two data sets, actual and budget. So our actual table has records of orders over two years, and we want to compare this data with our budget data set, which is showing data for 2018 and 2019. Okay, so if you look at the orientation of these two tables, it is still possible to compare the values. So we are going to use a combination of dynamic arrays and cube functions to be able to create this chart that compares the actual and budget values for each year, allowing us to switch and then see the values with a slicer. We could also add other attributes as slicers, right? This is possible with pivot tables, but I also want to show you how you can combine dynamic arrays with cube functions. But before we go into that, I think it's important we start off with the new functions group by and pivot by to see how flexible it is to now summarize data. Okay, so let's begin by inserting a table on this range. So control T or insert table, okay, would also make this work. And I'll click okay to insert a table on this range. Now I'll go ahead and name this table actual to make it easier for me to reference in my calculations. Okay, so I now have this table named actual. Now on this table, I'm going to insert a pivot table. So I'll go to insert pivot table. Okay, picks up my actual table. But for this example, I want to place it as in an existing worksheet. Okay, so I'll just place it by the side here. Okay, so that we can compare the outputs. Okay, so this starts my pivot table. So you know with pivot tables, you are supposed to provide a field for value, a field for the row, and then the field for the columns as well. Okay, so for our values, we'll drag in sales. Okay, and then we want to break this down on the row side using region. So region comes in here. And then further break this down with delivery mode also in columns. Okay, so this is going to be our summary. So I have region in the rows and then the delivery mode in the columns. My value is the sales, right? With these three in mind, we can use the new function pivot by to create the same thing without using pivot tables. So if you're using Microsoft 365, then you would probably have pivot by or group by. If not, it's probably coming your way soon. So pivot by allows us to aggregate values by rows and columns, right? It's going to use the same inputs we use to create the pivot table. First, we need to give it a row field. That is the column that is going to be sitting on the left side on top of each other. So that is going to be the actual table. Okay, and then I'll commit region to this. Okay, so I've committed the region field to this. I'll bring a comma across as my delivery mode. So again, I'll go into my table and then commit delivery mode. Okay, then I have to provide my values. So my values in this case was the sales, okay, the sales column. So I'll go actual square bracket sales. 
Okay. So these are my first three inputs. Then when I'm done, I'm supposed to provide the function. So over here, think of any calculation that you can do with the numbers, sum, average, min, max, and all those aggregating functions, you can put them here. So I'll put in sum, just have to type in sum. So these four are the mandatory arguments. Okay, so with these, I can get something similar to what I created above, right? So you notice that I have my regions and my total on the left, same as I have above, okay? My delivery mode is also across, same as I have above, and then my total and my values are also here, okay? So with this, I don't really have to always start a pivot table to get the summary. I can just use pivot by to get this done. So comparing the two, you realize that if I use pivot by to create a summary, any change in the source updates my summary automatically. So as an example, if I pick any random and then put in, let's say a huge figure, you notice that it pops up here directly. Okay, upper west picks it up. But with pivot tables, I have to go and refresh. So that is one clear advantage. Okay, so there are some other options that we didn't go through. So apart from the row, column, value, and then the function, so I have the option to show the field headers, right? So in this case, if you want to show the field headers, you have to select the headers as well in your table. Okay, you can also show the grand totals or not. Okay, the options are here. You can use that as well. You have the option to even sort the order, whether in descending or ascending order, by value or alphabetical order, all those options. Okay, then if you are using subtotals, you have some options to put in grand and subtotals as well. And then there's option to also sort the column as well. So if you're using the column fields across, you can also sort the columns as well. And then the option to also filter certain arrays in your summary is also here. So almost everything that you can do with people tables is present here, right? So for this purpose, I'm going to keep it to the mandatory fields. Now, what if I want to stack, let's say, the region and delivery mode? So delivery mode is not going into the columns, but it's going to be stuck under the region, right? Let's try that and see how we can use the dynamic array function to do the same thing. Okay, so what I basically want to do is I want to move delivery mode from column to row, okay? So I'll just overlap this. I want this to override it. Okay, so this time around is region and delivery mode. Now, can we create the same thing using the new function pivot by and group by? Yes, we can. But I want to, this time around, use group by, okay? So group by is similar to pivot by. So let's see how that works. So group by, it aggregates values by row fields. Earlier we had row and column with pivot by, but this one just makes your summary a bit longer, right? So this, the same inputs that we had earlier. So actual, okay. Then I want to be able to have this by region, okay? So you realize that in the row section, I have region first, and I also have delivery mode, okay? For this purpose, I'm going to hold the two together for now. So I'm going to put in actual delivery mode, okay, for now. So I have the two side by side. I'll correct this later. Then for the values, I want to analyze sales, so actual sales, okay? And then the function I'm going to use here is sum. Right, then the optional arguments follow. Okay, so if I close this and I press enter, what I'm going to get is a concatenation of the region and the delivery mode sitting row by row. Right, but it's not very neat. So, one way that we can actually do this properly to give us two different columns with region and delivery mode is to use a dynamic array function called hstack. Okay, so each stack sort of concatenates or joins arrays. So instead of using this join, I'm going to put in array one for actual region and then array two for delivery mode. Put this in each stack, close this, okay, and then this now separates the two. So I can have my region and my delivery mode. 
of course if i come to my pivot table and then i change layout to a tabular form okay i get something similar to this where my regions are here and then my delivery mode also follows and then i have my totals so i just formatted the numbers okay so if you just take a look you realize that you have your numbers the same way right in this case i think it would be helpful if we bring in some subtotals okay so i'll go and then include grand and subtotals okay that's number two right so if i close this then i have my subtotals which aligns with my pivot tables as you can see over here okay so this is the group by similar to pivot by but usually if your summary has a lot of items on the row level then you are going to use group by if you want to use pivot by then you are using a row field and a column field as i showed you right so now that you understand how this works i'm going to revert to our original region by sales okay so i'm going to take off this take off the each stack okay so we just have only one row field going into the sum okay and then i'll take off this as well so this gives us just the region by the sales values okay then same with my pivot tables i'll take off the delivery mode all right so this is an analysis on the actual table now let's bounce off to the budget okay so if you look at our budget table we have our regions we have our values here but our years are certain as column headers 2018 and 2019 that is not the ideal structure for analyzing data like this because 2018 2019 are actually supposed to be values under a column called year okay so when you have a situation like this it will be useful to collapse these values sitting as column headers into row items okay so that they can describe the values that they represent that process is called on pivoting so the right structure for this should actually be region okay then we have our year and then we have our amount okay so what this means is that for each amount if i have all my amounts here the corresponding year and region will come by the side of the record it then means that our data is going to be longer right because the values appear two times so these regions are also going to be repeated twice right so that is on pivoting this is normally done in power query but we can use a combination of dynamic array functions to also get this done here right so i'm going to break this down step by step to make it easier for you to understand the first thing we are going to do is to take these values okay and then put them together in one single column okay so the order is going to be the 2018 first item followed by the first item in 2019 then we come to the second item in 2018 go to the second item in 2019 and so on right so the function to do this is called two call okay so if i take two call and then give it this array it's going to spell all the values in one single array okay so this is what we have on standby now how do we align the respective year and region attributes to each value okay now to do that as i mentioned the region is going to be repeated twice so i need 20 records okay so the 20 records will now take each value to do that i'm going to use a new dynamic array function called choose rows okay so choose rows basically takes an input in this case i'm going to use these two years 2018 2019 right it comes as a pair right my goal is actually to create a placeholder where 2018 and 2019 is stacked 10 times okay so my goal is just to stack 2018 and 2019 10 times so i'll take this array then i'll go to my row number so how many rows am i going to create here i'm going to use a function called sequence okay for sequence if i give it a number it will spell by the number of times so i'm going to choose count a so count a counts the number of entries i have here so this is 10 close this bracket okay and then i'm going to skip the column argument because i'm going down it's starting from one and then the step is zero i don't want it to increase 
So I'll close my bracket for count A, close my bracket for choose rows. So when I do this, the expectation is that the two sets, 2018, 2019, is repeated 10, 10 times, right? So after getting the 10 records, okay, I'm going to use two call again, okay, to now turn it into a single column. So two call, that's the entire array I have here. Okay, so this is now going to use the order to now collapse this into a single column. Right, so if I cut this and I bring this here, you notice that if you eyeball, I've actually aligned the right years to each value. Okay, I'm going to use the same method to do for region as well. So if I'm going to do for region, this time around, I'm going to choose column, right? So this column is what I'm going to use. I'm stacking it two times to the right. But to make it dynamic, I'm going to count how many entries I have in the column headers here. Okay, so this I'm going to use count A to count how many entries that I have here. Okay, close this. Now, this is going to be sitting as rows, but it should be sitting as columns. So I'm going to skip this with a comma so that this actually reads as the number of columns I'm stacking. It starts from one and then there's, there's no step. So I'll put zero here and then close this, close that. So as expected, I get the region count repeating two times. And at this point, I can also convert this into a single column. So two call over this will also spill this. Now, the expectation is that if I take this and I place it side by side, each region is going to be repeated two times. Right, so Ashanti 324, Ashanti 586 for 2018, 2019, it goes on like that. So hopefully you get an idea how you can use this to unpivot, right? That is also the learning I wanted to show you. Now, what if I want to hold, you know, these are now three separate arrays, array one, array two, array three. Okay, what if I want to hold these three together? Very simple, because these are arrays, I can hold this, spell this down i can bring a colon okay and then select this one to and then spell this down i could do this with an h stack but when i do that you realize that i now have all these three coming together okay so this comes together right but if let's say i just want to group by the region and then just the amount just as we did earlier so i'm going to use group by so equal to group by now my row field is going to be this one Okay, and then my value field is going to be that one. Okay, so then I have to introduce my function, which is sum. Close my brackets. Okay, and then I have something like this. So this now gives me an analysis of the budgeted revenue figures by region. If it helps, you can now compare this side by side. So if I come here, okay, the thing about dynamic arrays is I'm just dealing with the first cells, right? So if I bring the first cell for the actual here, I can also put the budget side by side. Just select this one and then hash reference this. So I have actual and then I have budget over here. Okay, so what we've ended up is the analysis of our actual and budget side by side. Okay, so you see that they are represented in two sets of arrays. Okay, so this one on the left side and then this on the right side. Now, we could actually put all together as one array, okay, and then just put the actual and budget by the region, okay. So, first, because it's just two sets of arrays, I'm going to stack them together. So, selecting the first one, this is the first set, I'll bring a column, take this next set, hash to select the second one, okay. So, again, I can use an H stack for this, but you can also do it directly. So when I do it directly, you realize that this is now one dynamic array, everything is held together. If I want to pick just the region labels, just the actual amount and the budget value, I'm going to pick column one, column two, and column four, okay? So here I can use a dynamic array function called choose core, okay? So on this original range, I'm going to come in here and then pick column one, which is the region, 
column two, which is the actual, and then column four, which is the budget, and then close my brackets. Okay, so this is what I have. All right now, I have my totals at the bottom, but I can also put in my headers as well. So, this is going to be region, this is going to be actual, this is going to be budget in the same dynamic array. I can use I can use a function called vstack. Okay, so vstack helps you stack the arrays vertically. But in this case, I need a header, right? So I'll start my header with a curly bracket. So there are three labels I'm going to use here. So in the curly bracket, I'll bring a double quote. First one is going to be called region. I'll type this, close the double quote, bring a comma. Second one is going to be called actual. Close this one as well. And then the third one is going to be called budget. Okay, and then close this one as well. Okay, so this is going to be the headers. So the headers are going to be here and then the original array is going to be here. So once I have this, I can now go and then close my brackets for VStack. Okay, so I now have my region, my actual and my budget. So now that I have these two actual and budget side by side, Okay. I can even choose to drop the totals, right? So again, this is a new dynamic array function. So on this array, okay, I can choose to drop the total row by using minus one. Okay, so when I do that, I've cut off the total. I could have done it directly from the original array, but this is just to show you how powerful these new dynamic array functions are, right? Now on this, I can now insert my chart to compare actual and budget okay so this is going to be the chart to compare my actual and budget so i have something like this okay now if i want to compare the actual and budget what i can do is hold the budget series okay press Control one right and then plot this on the secondary axis Okay, so when I plot this on the secondary axis, you see that the chart now overlaps. Okay, so to make the budget or the target a bit bigger, I'll come to the gap width and increase it to about 100%. Okay, and then make the color or the fill. So I'll choose a solid fill for this purpose and then make the color a bit lighter okay so something like this then you have the option to hide these labels so i can choose none over here for this and then also choose none for this one as well so in the end i have this chart okay that compares my actual and budget now this is the first part of this video the idea was to show you how you could create the dynamic array calculations from the two tables. But wouldn't it be nice if I could have like a slicer that controls the 2018 and 2019 values? Okay, I showed you this earlier. Okay, so we want to be able to create something like this. Okay, where I can compare 2018 and 2019. But you know, to be able to do that, I need to have the year control the actual and then the budget table at the same time. Right, so it would be nice if this could be done with dynamic arrays, but because the two tables are going to be hosted in a data model, right, we will have to employ cube functions to get this done. And that is what I hope to cover in the second part of this video. So we'll learn how to use cube functions and dynamic arrays. That is probably going to be simpler than what I just showed you, because all the tables are going to be in the same data model. We insert our slicer and then we move on and do the calculations from there. But if you have any other way to do this with dynamic arrays, I'll be happy to hear from you in the comments. But this is just to show you how powerful the new dynamic array functions are. Please practice and add it to your list of Excel tricks. Thank you. If this video was helpful and you would like to receive more of these videos directly on your WhatsApp, you can send add to this WhatsApp number will add you to our broadcast list so you receive our videos directly. You can also visit our YouTube channel Finest Skills Hub. All our old videos are here. 
please subscribe for notification of new videos or connect with us on any of these social media handles. Thank you so much for watching.